something and you weren't happy with it. Yeah, what, what is that? And I, you were harsh back, I believe, to the person. What is Was it? it the subject of somebody suggesting that you had said something and, and you returned the, the comment? Well, if, if you can be specific, because mm. it has happened a couple of times. It happened a couple of times. That's yeah. it. That, uh, uh, if you tell me, yeah. I'll give you one but example. You, yes. Uh, I mean, I, with no malice. Mm. You see, Honorable S.E. Dunketia, I like him, I respect him. He's a very good friend until the incident that happened at Adom Eiffel. I respected him. I'm giving you an example. Please. I was with him at the studio. When he was there before me, when I entered, I said, ah, senior, because of you today, I can't fire. I was going to respond harshly to uh, Mr. Ruju Metronunu for insulting President Kufo. But all the same, I still have to defend. So I started talking. And I, also, I was also harsh. The same tone that Rojo used on President insulting him here and there, I reciprocated the same match. I never, I repeat, I never insulted Honorable Esidun Ketia. Mm. But what he said was that, uh, in our camp proverb, that if you are taking your shower or bath and you leave your clothes outside, okay, and they come to tell you that a madman has come for your clothes, you don't come out of the bathroom naked to chase the madman, the madman for your clothes for your clothes so he's not going to do the program literally he was saying that i'm a madman mm -hmm. and then i told him well you don't <laughs> you see you are out there creating impression that i'm a madman but when you are in dire need of help you will come to a madman you took money from me to go and pay your electricity bill <laughs> so give it back to me so i will you... prove to you that i'm a madman I need my money. Case closed. But Guyanians do not understand. They become stereotype, and they don't even read between the lines and the implications of that statement. But because I insisted that the guy should give me back his money, Kennedy Japan is a bad guy. But, you know, what he said was serious. Mm. He would say Kennedy Japan is a madman. Mm. What is he mean? And I know that when you wanted to pay your electricity bill, you came to me, you borrowed the money. It wasn't a gift. You borrowed the money, and I lend you that money, two hundred dollars. You never paid. So you reveal that to to, of to course, punish yes. him. Of course, not to punish him, but to, but to, 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 to let him know who he is. Mm. Case closed. Let's talk about Ghana sir, and some of the challenges of development. What, to your mind, are some of the fundamental things you know impeding our our our, our progress? Um, first of all, I think as individuals and citizens of this country. I believe every individual should dream big, think big, and do things big. Okay, the problem with Ghanaian entrepreneurs and Ghanaians for that matter is mediocrity. We think so small. We think, you know, everything is impossible. We can do it. You see, when we are in a country and have people who do not believe in themselves, then you have a problem. So this is the first problem we are facing in this country. For us to take this country economically to a different level, we need to encourage Ghanaians to be themselves. Let them think that sky is the limit. I mean, come on, don't think that I can make it. You know, I have a younger brother. I keep telling him, oh, if it's $30 million, I can raise the funds by syndicating, you know, to get these funds to do it. Then he opens his mouth as I said, listen, your beginning is even better than mine. I was in the village. You were in Kumasi, straight from Opokuwari to St. John's University. So come on, be yourself. If Kwame Japan from Asin Dumpim says that he can syndicate $30 million to do a project, why can't you do it? You should have confidence. You see, we have a lot of products in this country that if we encourage them, there will be somebody. But a system where, you know, let me give you a typical example. I have one of my daughters who was in Montessori at the North Jolo here. I took her to the U.S. And they tested her and they just promoted this girl. When she went to the new class, she was still first. But the comment they made was that, Jiradam is a very brilliant girl, but too quiet. Can you encourage her to open up? But you see, in Ghana here, they would have written, uh, Jiradam it's a brilliant girl and respectful. Yeah. 
that's the point. Your point, I, I see. see. Yeah, you get my point. Yeah. Instead of encouraging them to be forward, see things, you know, differently, they'll say, "Oh, you know," they try to call them like snails. They go into their shelves, and our society think people like that are the good ones. Americans, they indoctrinate them. An American probably will not even travel from New Jersey to New York City or Washington, D.C. But he feels America is the greatest country in the world. Guineans, we don't even have confidence in our own people. We don't even have confidence in our own products. When they see Ghana made things, they don't want to buy. Why? Why do you think that is the case? Ken? Yeah, there are two things. Ghanaian entrepreneurs, some of them are also, I don't know how to put it. You know, they, are short, they do shoddy jobs. Shoddy, yeah. I have three boo-boos that my wife bought for me. I went to Nigeria. Somebody was commending me, oh, this is a linen. You know, they put mm -hmm. on different things. Mm -hmm. But the linen, they, they, they were admiring it. Meanwhile, in my pocket, my brother, it was a big hole. I had a big hole in there. Because they did not, you know, knit it well or sew it well. You see, when you do this, you deter your own people from buying from you. So I believe in instead of mass production, you come out with quality products that will build confidence in the consumers. And as time goes on, you increase your production. Okay, but Ghanaians, they want to make money today. And that's it. So they don't care the products that they are giving you. The typical example is, you know, those traders going to China. My brother, I've been to China a couple of times. They have quality things there. But because they want to maximize profit, they come out with cheap products. You buy a spoon today. When the spoon is in your mouth, it breaks. <laughs> Very cheap. You see, so when you have citizens thinking this way, then my brother, we have a problem. So I think for us to move this country, first of all, the system has been such that we have been made to believe that whatever we want to do on earth here, before we die, the assistance should come from government. We have to do away with that. But we need support from foreign countries right. as well. You and see, not... it's a shame that as a nation, any time we're going to do our budget, we have to rely on pledges from other countries before we move on. But if a whole government is asking for pledges from donor countries, how are you going to run your own economy? Because they might disappoint you somewhere along the line. They are also basing their pledges mm -hmm. on their budget and what about taxes they're going to get over there. Mm -hmm. So I think... If we really want to move this country, we have to take our destiny into our own hands. We don't have the resources. Yeah, we don't have the resources, but we got to start somewhere. We have resources in this country. We have resources in this country. Look, when we are moving, this morning I went to Pram Pram. I saw this vast land there. Guys are doing pepper and tomatoes. Ripe pepper. Red. But, you know, they, they, they just left it. So I was asking the guy, why? They don't want it or what? If I were them, I would be there every day to make sure, even when it's not ripe, and I think I can put it on the market, I'll just take it off. What do you think of the oil discovery? Is this perhaps going to provide us with some resources as a country? Oil discovery, my brother, if it's going to be like the gold we have in this country, then I think it's a misblessing. What is that supposed to mean? A misblessing in the sense that then we are even better off not even discovering this oil. How can you say that? Yeah, I'm saying that because I want the government to negotiate well. We have gold in this country. Now, we've sold everything to foreigners. I want the government to come. I challenge my own government. Let them come out and tell us openly if we are benefiting from gold in this country. And I will challenge them any time, any day, that we are not benefiting from gold in this country. Look at the rate at which they are degrading our lands in this country. And parliament, I should be ashamed of myself that I also voted 3%. 3%. That's the royalty. You're yeah. referring to the royalty. Yeah, 3% to government. I am ashamed of myself, but I'm confident talking about it because I criticized it. How can the whole 230 parliamentarians will sit there and approve that whatever Newmont is going to do in this country, Ghana government is going to make 3%. Is that